All right, and it worked. Sweet. All right. Um, all right, now we got everything going. So I'm gonna try to work uh, both cameras because it looks a little bit crazy. But again, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to be discussing the GMR Gear Parasite version one. Um, this is a device that you can see looks similar in form and function to the original battery caddy that was just you know a nice wrapped piece of Kydex that held the cell that I had to uh, hand fit every time I made one of those for anybody who ordered one, which I'm super grateful that you uh, that you ordered those. Um, I enjoyed making them for you, but this is the next step and the next logical innovation in that thinking. Um, the whole reason why that battery cat caddy came about was I got this thermal uh, a couple years ago, and this thing is a great technology advancement. Um, if you're already familiar with night vision and you understand that capability, the thermal is just um, you know another leap past uh, the night vision. It, it's it's different in the sense that there's things you can do uh, with the night vision that you can't do the thermal, vice versa. But the thermal having the, the ability to spot people at distance, um, especially with the um, having the thermal fusion over the night vision goggle. So it overlays the thermal over your classic night vision. So you can see, um, you know, through the infrared spectrum and then also spot the heat signatures at great distance. Uh, incredible tool. Um, but it kills batteries, in my experience, about two hours. Um, so I had, uh, we had been playing a game in Virginia and it's the middle of the night. We had torrential downpour rain. Um, going up this hill, I spotted a bunch of these guys up in cover on like some rocks and some, you know, in, in a fixed position. So we're creeping up there, we're creeping up there. I get everybody in place, we're, we're getting them set. Um, everybody has their routes about what they're gonna do and when we start shooting and we're gonna move in and everything. And literally as I'm like, okay, everybody good? Two, you know, left side good, right side good. I'm start scanning our guys, I can see everything. All of a sudden the thermal light starts blinking, low battery, I'm like, oh, motherfucker. So um, I'm like, I luckily I had some batteries that were in the uh, elastic Velcro stuck on the back of my helmet. I knew it was gonna rain, so I had them wrapped in saran wrap, stuck in there. But, so it pretty much took me, uh, you know, a couple minutes to get that thing out, take the wrapping off, undo the thermal, get it back up, and then finally we were able to make the assault. But uh, this device is to streamline that. So now you can put this, on so many different places. I'll show you, I have two of these placed on the back of my helmet. These are the ones, it's a little dark for this one. Maybe I can brighten this up. These are holding uh, 123A lithiums that my, uh, my thermal runs on. So these ones are meant to do the immediate action swap for my thermal. Uh, then I have one on the front of my goggle this one is uh, the PBS 15s run off of a AA battery. So I have a lithium AA in there. That one is set up to service the night vision. I'll always have a battery in the night vision ready to go when I, even when I have it stored. I, I know you're not supposed to, um, you know, that's like the old, uh, what's been explained to me is that's for the old alkaline uh, cells that were more unstable. Um, someone who's way smarter than me explained to me that the lithium cells are incredibly more stable. Um, so you can keep the, the device powered um, for a longer period of time if, um, if you are willing to do that. So I have a battery in the night vision always ready to go. And then I have an immediate action reload uh, tethered to the device. The whole thing about why this uh, device is important is that your power source needs to be tethered to the object that you're going to use. Um, instead of having uh, like a dedicated pouch or, you know, uh, sticking some extra batteries in your pockets or just randomly throughout your pack, when you need it, you're not going to be able to get it quick. This is one quarter turn and then you have yourself 
immediately available to you. And since this device has all these different spine holes and routing and mounting options, you'll be able to tether it to anywhere. So as you can see, I just ran this through the, the cord that's holding on my counterweight pouch, nice and easy. So I can, I can access them super easy with the shock core on the front. I just had tethered it to the body of the goggle. And then I find the best place when you're going to put it on your rifle, the best place to put it is right in that sweet spot, right behind your, your, the, the red dot. So when you look down the gun, it stays perfectly within the profile of the, uh, the pec and, um, you know, it doesn't occlude your eyesight at all. And, uh, when you need it, then you can easily just reach up, pop it and get your battery. Uh, definitely the most tedious action of any reload for any of these devices is undoing this corkscrew that's on all the night division. Uh, and you know, your optic, your EOTech, your PEC-15, all these have a traditional long turn screw. So that's the, the, the action that you have to drill the most is getting the thread to line up again and uh, closing the device cap. So that's definitely the, uh, the part that takes the most time is reloading the device that it's going into. But um, definitely doable. I've, I've been practicing myself. So, you know, I'm like around 20 seconds getting it down. So being able to uh, do, the, uh, do the reload nice and quick. Um, so definitely something that you should practice just like any, any other part of your gear. It's something that you're going to need to uh, become familiar with. But having the battery instantly available to you is the name of the game. That's where it needs to be. So when you grab the gun, if you're taking it, you know, if you're in a patrol setting, having uh, immediate action battery. So if your battery dies when you're out in the field, having it right there available to you is the whole entire purpose of this device. The, uh, the life savings, like, like an insurance policy. And um, that's, that's where the, the real value of, of this device is. Um, the best thing about it is the body, it will hold a 123A, a AA, a AAA, or an 18350 battery. Um, either polarity, uh, positive up, uh, back and forth, doesn't matter. It will be totally silent, rattle free when you have the battery inside. Uh, it has two, um, two O-rings on the inside on the radial face and on the, uh, the top cap that interfaces with two different surfaces of the internal closure. So uh, it's uh, nice and waterproof, uh, dust proof, and you know, keep your battery in a good, good uh, physical housing and nice protected all on your gun. In a you know nice slick little package, um, that is a uh, I think pretty neat, pretty neat. So I have two on my helmet in the back, like I showed you. One on the night vision, one on the gun for the pack, and then uh, my comm setup. I have this. Turn this. Let's see this. Um, I have the Invisio X fifty. Um, active hearing protection set that runs on a double A. It dies constantly all the time, depending like if you're going to a shooting class and you've been uh, shooting a lot, um, the more times you're using it and actively sending the radio transmission kills the battery faster. So um, I have one that's just sitting right here. So perfectly I can grab this one and reload this unit if it ever dies on me or just to have the added redundancy of having the, uh, you know, the extra power immediately available to me. So, um, you know, you can find so many different uses for it. I have another one, this one, that I put a little bit of a, this red glow tape on. And this one, I just have a little emergency fire kit in here. So I have some windproof matches, a little bit of jute rope right tied around the bodies, the strike strip. Uh, so I can make, you know, a little bird's nest fire right out of this. Always have this nice and waterproof. And uh, it's good, like, camping thing, just so you can have 
so many things. You have the little shock cord. You can put this over your wrist, whatever, you know, tie to anything that you got. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, the, the, where we have the uh, retention for the shock cord, if you can look in there, you can see the, uh, the cavity is hollowed out. So as you tie the knot and pull it through the body, it's fully retained inside the, the unit so that, you know, it, super clean, you're not gonna snag it on anything and uh, just makes for a really nice finished product. And since the spine holes are on the uh, 312 and six, uh, you'll, uh, 312 and nine, you can run the cord in endless different directions if you wanna have uh, the, if you wanted to mount it on the bottom of the gun. You could uh, horizontally or vertically align it in, in any manner you want. You can even use uh, hardware screws, uh, run it through the body, tie it to your end lock, um, however you feel that you need to have it. Um, you know, you'll be able to configure it in so many different, different ways. Um, but yeah, it's just a, just a really cool product. I'm excited about it. Um, something that's been in, testing and different, uh, different phases for a long time, but it's the kind of thing that the, uh, the idea is better than, than the product. Um, it's one of those things that's like, if you have a night vision device, if you have uh, EOTech, if you got anything, um, you know, a certain flashlight that takes a, a weird battery, you got to have this on the gun. That's, that's where it needs to be. And it's what it's really developed for having it on the, on your piece. Um, always ready is, is what it's about. If you got a night vision, it's gotta be on the goggle, attached to the goggle. It can't be in some separate pouch, you know, something else that's gonna be, uh, you know, you're gonna be stumbling through, looking through all your stuff when you really need it. So, um, you know, just a cool product, um, something that, you know, we have in stock now available. Um, I think, you know, I, I think that now that the YouTube does work like this, maybe we can do some more videos showing different, different cool guns, different kit configurations, and uh, you know, just have that as another way that we can do a live, get everybody together. Um, we got some new cool uh, shooting footage from the last time we were out doing some drills um, that we're gonna put together. Uh, we got another training date coming up soon that we'll be able to um, get some more footage of, doing some more live fire stuff, some team-based movement and um, you know, some just, good uh, dynamic shooting and stuff like that, some fun stuff. So um, yeah, thanks for everyone for listening. Um, hope you guys, if you are interested in this product, uh, it's at GMR Gear uh, right now. We have them in stock. Um, this one I just painted, they're all gonna come black like this, but you know, you can paint them with uh, any spray paint you want. They take uh, all the different glow tape adhering really nice to it. So you can really customize them, you can mark them with uh, you know, whatever type of cell you want to put in that if it's a dedicated one. But um, cool product, we got a bunch of other stuff uh, in the works, but just wanted to show this one off to you. Um, really excited for this. And then um, we'll have some more videos soon. And um, thank you very much for everybody with the support, with uh, all the mini maps, all the gear, truly appreciate it. And uh, we'll have more good stuff coming down the pipe soon. Thank you very much. Hope you guys have a great night. Thanks, guys.